All right, so we're going to talk about WWDC today. iOS 16, some new Macs. Uh, do you want the good news first or the bad news? <laughs> Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Front Page Tech, FPT. Of course, the show that gives you all the latest tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. We have an actual episode for you today. There is news. News has happened. I know lately there hasn't really been any news, but unlike my dad... The news came back. First up for the day, story numero... Ooh, that was rough. Uh, story numero uno, are we getting any big surprises at WWDC? I mean, last week, Apple officially announced the event for June 6th, which is a Monday. And if we're being honest, last year's event, last year's Dub Dub, kind of sucked harder than Sam Cole. You, uh, you remember when I told everyone that a MacBook Pro was coming at WWDC last year, but then it didn't? And the media wrote articles about how, like, everyone sold their current MacBook Pros in preparation for the new one at WWDC because I said it was coming, but then it didn't, and they were mad. Yeah, no. Me either. Well, Mark Gurman seems to believe that this year could be different. Apple is gearing up to launch some new Macs in the next few months. What better place to do so than WWDC? I'm told there are two new Macs coming around the middle of the year, or early in the second half, one of those is likely to be the new MacBook Air. Other models in the works include an updated Mac Mini and 24-inch iMac, as well as a low-end MacBook Pro to replace the aging 13-inch model. And let's not forget that the new Mac Pro and iMac Pro models are in development. And, you know, it's funny that he threw the new Mac Mini in this report uh, and referenced that. Because on Twitter, Steve Trotton Smith, who has me blocked because he's edgy like that. He tweeted that within the firmware for Apple's new studio display, Apple name drops the Mac Mini specifically as Mac Mini 10 One. He also guesses that it would ship with an M2 chip and not M1 Pro. At this point, I would just be happy to see any hardware at all at Dub Dub this year. It's like, out of everything going on in Apple land right now, I am most excited about what they are doing with Apple Silicon. I'm most excited about the Mac lineup. So give me a Mac Mini and I'll be happy. Give me a Mac Pro and I'll be real happy. To be fair, no one significant is saying that we should expect a new Mac Pro at WWDC, but at the end of Apple's last event, they literally ended with this. And they joined the rest of our incredible Mac lineup with Apple Silicon, making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. But that is for another day. And I don't know, I feel like they wouldn't name drop the Mac Pro like that unless it was literally one of the very next things they talked about. That would complete their transition to their own silicon, and WWDC would be the place to at least announce it in front of developers. I would imagine, though, that if we do in fact see it at DubDub, it definitely won't ship anytime soon. Maybe... Uh, a little preview and then it ships like later maybe december but you know what ships in the right now today's sponsor <music> hey question for you when you go to sleep you tuck yourself in nice and warm at night did you leave your front door unlocked because that's pretty much what you do when you reuse passwords and why do we end up reusing passwords because remembering passwords is hard. That's why today's episode is sponsored by Keeper Security. I know you've seen other password managers before, but this one is serious business. Securely generate, share, and manage passwords with family and colleagues. In fact, Keeper has been named PC Mag's Password Manager of the Year for three years straight. Fill out forms easily with Keeper's patented autofill technology, and you can store more than just passwords too, like social security cards, passport photos, and more. Keeper is also also perfect for businesses with SSO systems integrations, role-based access control, and secrets management. Get started with Keeper right now by clicking the link in the description down below. And of course, a huge thanks to Keeper for sponsoring this episode of Fuck Right There. Okay, uh, welcome back to the thing. Uh, last up for the day, story numero lasto. Oh, God. Uh...
iOS 16, that's the one thing that we really haven't heard any leaks about this year. But it's like, are we not hearing anything about iOS 16 because it's gonna be awesome? Like they're working on some really great crazy stuff. It's amazing. But Apple is keep a very keep secret. <laughs> what? Or are we not hearing anything about iOS 16 because well, there's nothing to hear about iOS 16. Where there ends up being really nothing new, nothing exciting, nothing fun, and it's sort of a lot like it was last year. Remember how last year was just kind of meh? Is it great or is it gonna be meh? Because it's really starting to look like that last option. The meh one. Because Mark Garman, Marcus Garmantis, says that this year there will be no redesign once again with iOS 60. What is the problem? What is it at? Why is there no read it? We've had the same thing since iOS 7. iOS 7 came out in 2013. What do I have to do? What do you want? You want me to pay $5 a month? I'll pay $5 a month for iOS and then you give me redesign? I will do it. I will pay for it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm not saying that I want to die. I'm just saying that I don't want to live. Still, he does say that we'll see, quote, significant improvements like uh, new health tracking features and um, an update to notifications. Mark, Mark, my boy, we, you and I, we have two very different definitions of what significant improvements means. He does mention possibly a new multitasking interface for iPad OS, so that, uh, that's cool. Can't, uh, can't wait for that. Oh, but wait, uh, what, what's this? His report also mentions that iOS 16 is, quote, full of references to the upcoming AR VR headset. Okay, so we are getting a surprise. Does that mean that the AR VR headset will be at WWDC? Hell yeah. Hell Maybe. As far as I know, a full-blown introduction of the mixed reality headset is still probably out of the question in June. But I am told that beta versions of iOS 16, codenamed Sydney, are chock full of references to the headset and its interactions with the iPhone. That indicates that the headset will launch during the iOS 16 cycle, which kicks off in June and will last until iOS 17 comes out in the fall of 2023. How Mark Gurman of him, just, oh, you know, sometime between now and not now. But it may also suggest that Apple could preview some of its upcoming augmented and virtual reality software earlier. Perhaps we could even get a peek at the headset's ROS, short for Reality Operating System. 9to5Mac also published an exclusive corroborating some of that, saying that they expect iOS 16 notification updates as well, including new expanded focus mode configurations. Oh, and uh, new features for new. Okay, don't laugh at this. This is serious. New features for Apple News. How about that? That's pretty uh, crazy, huh? Woo! I could just calm down. Contain your excitement. I can feel your excitement from here. Overall, gonna be honest, kind of getting bored with this. To me, there is just no excuse anymore for Apple to be this lazy with software right now. I'm really hoping that most of iOS 16 is just a really well-kept secret and that we'll actually be surprised at the event. Because if not, if there's no awesome changes to iOS 16, if we don't get surprised at all at WWDC in a couple months, I quit. That's right. I'm gonna leave you like my dad left me. <laughs>